Um, hi, it's me. That's right, hike up your spook pants, cause we're doing a freaking Halloween episode, my guy. So excuse me as I slip into something a little more appropriate for the occasion. It, I'm, I'm Jesus. This is okay, right? Like, like culturally? Be because I know that Jesus historically wasn't a white guy. Like, I know that. I'm specifically trying to be the Western depiction of him that they draw as white. You know, not like the historical darker skinned. I should have thought this through more. I'm taking it off. So I'm sure you've heard of Goosebumps, the series of children's horror novels written by R.L. Stein. They were eventually adapted into a TV show and then even later some theatrical movies. The first one of which I actually really enjoyed. I mean, come on, it stars everybody's favorite LGBT ally, Jack Black. Where's my ally? I'm here, I'm here. Where's my ally? There he goes, there's my bro. There's my ally! But today we're gonna look at an episode of the TV series that absolutely floored me when I first saw it because it contains the most insane, out of left field plot twist that I think I've seen in anything. It's so crazy that if you think you might have some idea of where the plot's going at any point throughout this video, I encourage you to pause and comment your prediction down below because there's no way you're going to get it. If you get it right, it's only because you either cheated and looked it up beforehand or you just say the most insane plot twist you could possibly imagine and accidentally stumble into the right one. This twist in this episode is... Well, you'll see. So without further ado, this is Goosebumps. Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Following the iconic Goosebumps intro, we meet our main character of this episode, Billy, who's being dropped off at summer camp with a bunch of other kids. Where's the camp? And this is kind of off topic, but the art director for this episode might have the most Italian name I've ever heard. Armando Scrignoli. Upon looking this guy up, I was really disappointed to see that he looks like this and not this. So somebody's coming to get us, right? Do you think that kid's supposed to be cool? I couldn't tell from the sunglasses and the bandana. He looks like a space alien was told to take the form of a human kid, but only had cartoon characters to use as reference. Anyway, the bus drives off, leaving the kids alone. Things get worse when they think they see a vicious beast in the bushes. <laughs> but it's scared off with a flare shot by the camp director, Uncle Al. Hi, I'm Uncle Al. Uncle Al. The camp director. Who leads the kids the rest of the way to camp. It's your first time at camp? Yeah. I usually spend my summers with my relatives. My parents go out of town a lot. What do they do? Rob Banks? <laughs> Whoa, we got a funny guy over here. You know, I think this kid has a future making commentary videos. Now, this character, Roger, has a lot more of these one-liners throughout the episode, but don't worry. I will show you every single one of them. So after the boys and girls split up and go to their separate camps, girls are not part of this program. Good. I forgot my deodorant. <laughs> Billy settles into his cabin where one of his bunkmates, Mike, finds something in his bed. Oh! What's the matter, Mike? Not enough chips in your cookies. Oh! They get rid of the snake, but it already bit Mike, so they seek help from their counselor, Larry. You're the counselor? Uh, the name's Larry. Okay, dude, but he had no way of knowing that was your name, so maybe chill out? Uh, the name's Larry. What happens when this guy goes out to eat? Hello, sir, what can I get for you today? Um, the name's Larry? Okay, I'm sorry, but I had no way of knowing that. No, Eric, it's me, Larry Johnson. We lived on the same street growing up. You remember we would always play hopscotch using the, the, the purple chalk? And, and then we'd go to your house and watch episodes of Jimmy Neutron. Reach to the stars, buy candy bars, a kid with a knack for invention. Also, Larry, and to a lesser extent, Billy, are both sporting that mid-part hairstyle that was popular in the 90s before it got replaced by Bieber hair in the early 2000s. And I have a theory as to why it went out of style. Can you think of a controversial figure with that hairstyle that came on the scene in the early 2000s that boys might not want to be compared to? That's right. 
Lord Farquaad from Shrek single-handedly killed that hairstyle. You know, before TikTok boys brought it back. Anyway, they ask Larry if Mike can see a nurse, but he says there's not even a nurse at camp and that Mike will be fine. Later, the boys sneak out to see something called the Forbidden Bunk. Don't tell me the number one camper is chicken. <laughs> I'm not a chicken. Hey, hey. Maybe the number one's afraid of doing a number eight. Hey. Whoa. Thank God Billy cut Roger off. I mean, could you imagine if this show's young, impressionable audience heard him say, number two? That means poop. They make it into the Forbidden Bunk, but it's revealed they're being trailed closely by the beast from earlier. Then, the next morning, Mike is nowhere to be seen. Hey, where's Mike? There's no blankets on his bed. He probably ate him. <laughs> ate him. <laughs> Billy goes looking for him and is confronted by the groundskeeper. Where are you? You and your bunkmates better get your sorry hides down to the lodge. Fun fact, today this actor has a YouTube show where he reviews breakfast cereal. What's up, Cereal Huts? Today we're going to talk about Lucky Charms. So there's a lot of information about Lucky Charms to try to squeeze into this video, so try to keep up. No, I'm just kidding. I just thought they looked alike. And yes, that means I already had to be familiar with the cereal show in order for this guy to remind me of it. We all go down weird internet rabbit holes, okay? Larry and Uncle Al both pretend that Mike never existed. Yeah, well then how come Larry won't tell us what's going on? Counselors aren't supposed to talk about bad stuff. Yeah, Mike gives poor little kids nightmares, huh? Then everyone plays a game of baseball. You're out of here. You're out of your mind. Safe by a mile. Safe at third. <laughs> what? He beat the throw, Larry. Now play ball. Larry! Now, you might be expecting me to make fun of Larry, who's in at least high school, for throwing a tantrum over a game of summer camp baseball that he's playing against literal children. But I can actually sympathize with him because I myself have experience as a catcher being screwed over by an umpire's calls. Did I ever play baseball? Of course not, but I played a catcher in a musical version of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Why does so much footage of me exist? And why were we playing American baseball in Alice in Wonderland? That's like an English story. As revenge, Larry forcefully throws the ball at the head of Colin, the tough kid, knocking him out. Larry claims it was an accident and Uncle Al believes him. Billy then offers to take care of Colin and lets him fall asleep. Um, when he first got hit with the ball, they suggested that he might have a concussion. Maybe he's got a concussion or something. He should get some help. You're not, you're not supposed to let people fall asleep after they have a concussion. Luckily, Colin's fine later, but, uh, you know, I'm not qualified to give medical advice, but I feel comfortable telling you that if you ever have a concussion, as Aladdin would say, don't you dare close your eyes. Anyway, after hearing the beast outside the tent, the boys run inside the cabin, but they realize after that Roger isn't with them. They confront Larry about it the next morning, but he shrugs it off. Because you don't believe us about Roger. I don't even know the guy. I'm in charge, you got that? Now get your bathing suits on, losers. You're going to the lake. Now, the way Larry said this, I thought that going to the lake was supposed to be like a chore or a punishment. But no, it seems like it's just supposed to be like a camp activity when they get there. Then why'd he say it like that? Now get your bathing suits on, losers. You're going to the lake. You guys are going to the lake. And then after, we're gonna make s'mores and sing camp songs and have a wonderful time. You got it? On the way to the lake, Billy sees a payphone and tries to call his parents, but he's stopped by Uncle Al. What are you doing, Billy? Billy then takes this opportunity to ask about what happened to Roger. I checked the files. There is no camper up here named Roger. No first name, no middle name, no Roger. Well, that's not true. I mean, I know Roger. He was in my bunk. Get to the lake, Billy. Now that you guys have seen Uncle Al is so sketchy, I can tell you this. You might remember in the last video I had a mustache. It's me, the first and only white guy with a mustache and glasses to make commentary videos. Well, why do you think I got rid of it? I don't want to have any similarities to this creep. No, I'm just kidding. I got rid of it because I looked 
40. I'm only 21. I shouldn't look like I could be dropping off my kids at soccer practice or ballet practice. Whatever they're into, I'll support, as long as it's not at a church. <laughs> At the lake, Larry throws life jackets at Jay and Colin. That causes them to go under, prompting Larry to flee the scene. When Billy can't find the other boys, he returns to the cabin in a panic where he decides to run away. And is it just me or does Billy here with his striped shirt and his baseball bat kind of look like Ness from Earthbound? If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. You're probably not a gamer like me. So he runs into Donna from the girls' camp, who's also trying to run away, as her friends have been disappearing too. Then, everyone from Billy's camp shows up in search of him and Donna. And for whatever reason, there's this weird special effect here where Uncle Al and the counselors are just shown as, like, floating heads. What is wrong with you boys? I said hustle! Don't know what that's about. Billy joins them, and they give him a tranquilizer gun that he uses to threaten Uncle Al. Camp's over. Nobody else is gonna die. Die? Nobody has died here, Billy. This is a summer camp. You're a liar. And okay, a little reveal is about to happen, but it's not the big twist I talked about at the beginning. That's still coming. Billy fires the weapon only to find out it's empty. Everyone cheers for him and Billy's parents walk out to explain what's going on. Billy, listen. Your father and I have been asked to lead a key expedition to a very dangerous place. We couldn't stand the thought of being away from you for so long, but government rules say we couldn't take you unless you pass certain tests. So, everybody was in on this. Campers, counselors. <laughs> We're all actors, Billy. Working at the lab. Yeah, it turns out everyone was an actor, and this was all just an elaborate way of testing Billy. The Beast is revealed to be an animatronic operated by the groundskeeper, and all of the kids that disappeared show up. Hey, Billy. All in one piece. <laughs> one piece! <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Is he a big fan of the anime One Piece? One Piece! Also, freaking Donna was in on it too. Congratulations, Billy. Imagine thinking that a girl liked you only to find out she was an actor hired by your parents. Billy's not even friend zoned, he's job zoned. <laughs> All right, now it's time for the real twist of the episode. You ready? No, you're not. Better go get your things back, Billy. Expedition leaves first thing in the morning. Where are we going? Very far away. A place called Earth. Research tells us the aliens there are pretty dangerous and uh, unpredictable. Huh. Bet you they're not as crazy as Larry and Uncle Al. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, Billy. You never know. Oh, of course, they were aliens the whole time. That makes sense. I just have a couple questions. So first of all, Billy's never heard of Earth despite it being visible in his planet sky. What planet could they even be on where that's possible? Are they on the moon? If they're on the moon, where on the moon is this forest that they're in? And if they're not on the moon, they didn't need to make the Earth visible in the sky. They could have just had Billy's dad hand him a folder with a photograph of Earth in it. It would have gotten the same message across. Also, earlier I mentioned how playing American baseball in Alice in Wonderland didn't make any sense. Well, these are aliens on another planet playing American baseball. Not to mention they also have cookies and snakes and canoes and payphones. Basically, their culture is identical to ours in every way. What I think actually happened here is that originally the reveal was just supposed to be that the whole camp was a test for Billy, but then R.L. Stein or whoever realized, wait a minute, that's not spooky. This is supposed to be a spooky book. Uh, I guess I can make, I think we're aliens. That's spooky, right? That's creepy. So I hope you enjoyed the craziest episode of Goosebumps. I know I personally really enjoyed it as an example of human culture. Happy Halloween!